Hi everyone, Jamie here at the Gardener Center. So this is two weeks in a row that the girls have pushed Sean out of the way for the videos, for the weekly videos. No worries, Sean will be back. There's just not, I think next week, there's not a lot going on in the garden at this time, right? We've had a couple frosts already. Um, last week we watched some of Joy's super unique plants that she brought in, which was a lot of fun. So this week, um, I'm gonna, it's gonna be kind of like a floral design 101 class. I'm gonna show you how to make a simple arrangement at home. We're gonna do that sort of low, lush, compact style, sort of, you could use it as a centerpiece. Thanksgiving's coming up, so um, after watching this, maybe you'll have some tips in your arsenal. You can make your own um, holiday centerpiece, or just to give a gift to someone, or you know, just have some fresh flowers in the house. So uh, let's get started. We're going to chat about, you know, tools, mechanics, um, flower choices, and just I'm going to build this arrangement from start to finish and show you how it's done. So we'll get started. Um, we can talk tools first. I use three different tools all day long um, with my floral design. So I, I use my knife, which is just like a Swiss Army style foldable knife, which if you're not comfortable using a knife, don't. You just, if, just for this basic home use, if you've got your garden clippers you wanna use, that's great. Um, if you might be super skilled, you might have great knife skills in the kitchen, like culinarily, but you have your cutting board and all this, this is different. You're holding a stem and cutting it and pulling the knife towards you like that sort of. So, you know, if you're not comfortable holding a knife in hand, don't worry about it, use your clippers. I use a thicker clipper for woodier stems like branches or, you know, lilac or hydrangea, depending on where it's been cut off the plant. But I love these like, these little, they're sort of like bonsai snips that I use a lot. They're very sharp. <laughs> um, it's almost like having two knives and you can get a really nice angled cut on your stem, um, really sharp. So I'll tell you a funny story in a second with this, but the, I should touch on that. When we say to cut a stem at an angle, the reason why is because you wanna create more surface area on that stem to open up all those capillaries and allow the water to you know, fill, up, fill up the stem and, and hydrate the bloom. Um, you know, if you cut it straight across, that's less surface area. So that's why we say that, to cut at an angle like that. But these, so I'm gonna age myself too with this, but 25 years ago when I, my very first day in a flower shop. So my background's in musical theater. That's what I studied and that's what I did for a while, sort of in my earlier life. But um, family friends of mine had three flower shops that along the shore in, in, in New Jersey that I, would, I started helping them out on school breaks you know, while I was auditioning and all of that stuff. So I learned so much from them. My very first day, Sue handed me a pair of clippers similar to this, held a stem and I popped right through my fingertip and ended up in the ER getting that closed up on my very first day. <laughs> but here I am 25 years later, I'm still playing with flowers, I'm still using tools, but the thing is just be careful while you're doing this, whatever tool you choose. Um, so next we're gonna talk about the vessel. I'm just using a simple, five by five clear glass cylinder for this today. So many of us have these just like piling up in the pantry if you've received flowers as a gift um, over the years. So you can use a cube, you can use something that's more oblong, but just something that's low for this type, this style arrangement. Um, and if, you know, you can use a piece of pottery that's opaque. So if you, have something like that you can skip this step but if I'm using something clear I like to line the inside of the vase with something like a leaf this is a really cool calathea with these white pinstripes almost looks fake it almost looks like somebody came in and painted those white stripes um, or aspidistra leaves you can even use we call it bare grass in the florist but similar so many of us have the ornamental grasses in our yard you can just go and cut, cut off a handful of it wind it up inside your vase before you do this next step, which is this taped grid that I'm gonna show you. But if you're using a clear glass vase, I just think it's nice to, 
it's not only visually appealing to see, we're gonna put this aspidistra leaf inside this one, um, but it also sort of covers the, you know, the, the stems are gonna be going in at a whole bunch of different angles, so it makes a nice clean look. So you can cut off the stem part of your leaf that you're using and just slip it right inside the vase and just stretch it out to the inside there. And then this is an important part of mechanics to make your life easier. We're gonna tape a grid over the top of the vase. Um, you know, back in the day, people still use them, those frogs, they're called frogs. They're really heavy um, metal discs that have all those metal sharp prongs in them that people will slip inside of a vessel like that. This is just sort of the same idea, just a little bit easier. Now this is, um, florist this is half inch clear florist tape but you absolutely can use um, scotch tape if you have at home okay so for this size container I'm just gonna do three pieces across one direction and three pieces across the other direction so you can use your knife or a pair of scissors to cut your pieces so just straight across like this and then I'm gonna turn it and do them in the other direction here. I don't know if you can hear if my mic's picking up, but Pepper's, our little cockatiel, is being very loud right now. Um, okay, so I like to then tape around the edge here, just holds down the pieces that you've gone across with, okay? So now you have your little grid system. That's gonna help you build this a lot easier than just starting with a wide mouth piece like this and putting your stems in. So I'm gonna fill up with water here. Here's another tip with the water with these low arrangements, especially either if you're using an opaque container or if you're lining it with a leaf like this, um, you kinda can't see where the water level is that easily, but with these low arrangements, you really want to always keep your water level all the way up to the top. Reason being is that the stems, you want to, you know, when you're building, I'll show you, when you build this arrangement, you don't want all your stems going up in the same direction. That'll look kind of silly, right? So you, you want to make these low, lush, compact styles look like they're just sort of dripping over the side of the vase. So the stems that are covering the, the, the lip of the vase are going in at an angle like this. They're not necessarily hitting the, you know, the bottom of the vase, so that's why you want to keep the water all the way to the top all the time. And you can change your water out every couple of days too. That's a good idea. And with this grid system, it's so easy. Just bring the whole thing over to the sink. Even with the flowers, once it's all done, you're easily able to just tip all the water out and then just refill it. But keep your water level all the way up there for those stems that are going in at an angle. Okay, so I kind of chose some flowers here that are maybe like leaning into fall a little bit. Um, I'm not a big, color palette is always important to me for my eye, but <clears throat> I'm not a big, for, you know, we're talking seasonal, so we're in fall. Um, not a big like bright red, yellow, orange person. I kind of tend to look to nature itself to see the actual color palette going on outside and it's not really that bright. So you can use your imagination a little bit with your color paletting. I think we're gonna kind of go in this direction. We might throw in some of this other fall texture, but um, you know, purples are a nice color palette in, in fall tones and soft peaches. I'm loving, you know, silver tones of eucalyptus. So we're gonna, we're just, we're just using a nice mix here. Um, so I think it's nice. You can kind of start a little bit with your base greens. So we're gonna, we're gonna start to fill in. I have some of the silver dollar eucalyptus here. I'm gonna and again, see how it went in at an angle? We're gonna try to cover this whole lip of this, this vase. When you're cutting, um, here I can kind of show you a way to guide, because you can always cut more off the stem, you, you can't add more once you've cut, right? So, you know, and forgive me, for me, this has been 25 years of doing this so long, it's almost muscle memory. 
you know, whether I'm using a tall vase or whether I'm using something like this, I sort of just know where to cut. But if you're starting out, say you want this piece kind of to come out to here, just sort of hold it up to the vase and eyeball it where you think it would land in the vase. So for me, I think that's going to be right about here. You cut it off in place, okay? So we're just going to fill in with a little bit of greens in every direction here. The eucalyptus has a nice silver tone to it. See, I'll switch back and forth, you know, switch up my tools. This is, this is called acacia. It's a purple acacia. It's got nice texture to it. I like to consider that when choosing flowers. Again, so I know it's not the right time of year to be foraging so much in your yard for a, a nice fresh floral arrangement. But when it is, I mean, you can use this method with the grid um, for a single variety, all your hydrangea that you're growing or in the spring, all, you know, all your peony. So, you know, you can use your hosta leaves in your yard to line your leaf with. You don't have to come in and get a piece of aspidistra from a florist. So I love when people start, you know, doing that. They come here, they learn how to grow a perfect mop head hydrangea and then they're cutting them. <laughs> to use inside their home or for arrangements, it's great. So this is a little bit of that purple acacia here. We're just putting in some pieces and sort of just kind of covering that lip there, using that lip, the vase as structure. Then you can start to fill in a little bit through the middle. Another rule of thumb with your vases for these low and compact style ones, you really want to at least, and I'm talking about where you want your flower placement, you want to at least double the size of the vase, the height of the vase, because if you, if you leave everything too short, it looks kind of squatty, like somebody sat on it, it doesn't look right. So you wanna try to you know, get yourself into the habit of thinking on those lines. If you're doing a taller piece, you can go you know, two times as high or more. But for these low ones, I think it's just an important tip to know you want to at least go double the, the, the size of the vase. So just a little bit more, you know, sort of texture greener. I'm going to add some of this seeded eucalyptus here to fill in on the sides. Seeded eucalyptus has such a nice sort of droop to it. for like that drippy, lush feeling, and it gives you some texture. I think when you're choosing flowers for a mixed arrangement, you wanna, of course, think about your color palette, but you wanna think about texture, sort of those interesting elements that will bring your eye to the pieces, like the acacia has fun texture, the, the seeded eucalyptus has fun texture. So let's start adding in some of these floral elements. So like I said, sort of like the leaning into fall. I know floral design is really messy, by the way, too. <laughs> so you just got to prepare for that. Um, let's see here. We're going to add a little bit of this rust tone here. Now, here's another thing. Um, if you put in a stem that you don't like the placement of when you put it in, you put it in and you say, I don't, I don't like it there. A real easy way to get it out is to just gently twist instead of pulling straight up because it might catch on things. So just gently pull and twist and you'll be able to get it out easier to, to reapply it in there. Okay. So I love to use, I mean, you'll see this that Sean has out in the spring and in sometimes the cooler months, um, some of this decorative kale cabbage. I love to use them in spring and fall and winter arrangements. They're, they're a big, so here's where we're talking a big focal flower, something really big and chunky like this. Um, and I love like this purple combination in some of the fall tones. So you can, kind of eyeball like you are, like I am here. I want this one coming out here a little bit and I can kind of tell where it would land in the vase at that angle and that's where I'm going to give it <clears throat> a cut. 
And you, again, too, when you're placing with that grid, just twist, just twist on in there. That helps get the stem placed. I'm gonna do another piece sort of on the opposite with this kale, on the opposite side. And you'll see me peeling off if, you know, we've processed all of these, but again, if you're foraging in the yard, there's gonna be leaves all the way up and down the stems too. You kinda wanna make sure you've cleaned the stems, pull all the leaves off. You don't want the leaves in the water. It, it can create a little bit more opportunity for the bacteria to grow in the water and decreases the um, vase life. So that one I'm gonna come in over here. And if I hope you can see in the video, but at this point now, I've really sort of covered over the edge of the container so that you know we're getting that nice rounded sort of look here, okay? So let's add in another element, another color, these beautiful roses here we're gonna add in of like a peach tone. They've kind of got that garden rose vibe. So again, I'm gonna peel these leaves off, give it a cut. We can, you can cluster a, sing, a, a variety of flowers together. That looks nice. Um, one thing also too to keep in mind with these low and lush ones, you don't, you don't necessarily need them to be all the same height together. It's nice to have a little bit of depth so this one I might place just a little shorter than this rose so that it doesn't look, I mean, if you like that pave look, that's definitely a look too, but a little bit of depth and texture looks nice. So that one's just placed a little lower, so it's got a step there. I'm gonna put this guy over here. Again, and you know, you just gotta play with it. So you wanna, you'll place it, like I said, once you, get, you have a lot of stems in there at this point, the twisting really does help. So gently twist to get in place. Okay. I think at this point here, I've got some other peach, just a different variety of rose here. But I really do like that tone of peaches and rusts and, and purples in fall. So twisting in, getting her in place. Do another couple roses for you. And see again how I'm going in at an angle here so I can get that stem head. If I want it at this, at this spot, I want the head of the flower here. You know, I think our first tendency is to put it directly down, but you're really gonna wanna put it in at that angle. And again, you can twist. And then there, she's in the right spot for you, okay? And do one more rose. I think I'll put her here. And it's all, you know, play around. You know, you'll get used to, once you get the mechanics down, you'll get used to the placement. And then it's just having fun with all the color and the texture and the blooms. So to, to make this a little bit more fall, I'm gonna add a little of this, like, broom corn that we've got here. It's, again, fun texture and that feels like fall to me so we'll and some of those like empty spots now that we've got we'll fill in I and you're I'm constantly twisting the vase twisting and turning it in front of me so you can get a good look at it from all angles get this piece in here We've got some, th this is fun, we've got some kangaroo paw, it's called, they actually, if you look at them close, they do kind of look like little kangaroo paws, but this is a nice rust tone that will pick up some of those fall colors. So when you have a stem, I hope you can see this, maybe against my shirt you can see it a little better, but where there's, we, I'll call these laterals, all these pieces that come out, you can use this twice. So if you, if you cut this here at this joint, you can use this piece, so you can put that piece in, and then you, well actually let's use it three times, because this is kind of wonky, this piece, so I'm gonna cut it right here, and here's a single piece. I stop right there, and then here's one more, okay? And it's just, you can't do, you, there's no right or wrong. I mean, if you like the color palette, you like the mix of flowers, it's, it's just kind of trial and error for the placement. Um, 
we'll put in a little bit of berry here too. So think, when you're thinking of also choosing your flowers, think of different shapes. So roses are round, ranunculus are round, lilies have a star shape to them. Um, then there's things like snapdragons that are long, stock that's kind of long and linear. Those look good in short arrangements, but those are really nice for your tall, your tall pieces. Um, I'm gonna, oop, this guy's kind of falling out there. I'm gonna add some hypericum here. So I sort of feel like this is maybe slightly non-traditional for, you know, if you're thinking of a fall toned arrangement, does the purp, does, do you like the purple in there? You know, at, you know, it's maybe a little different, but once it all fits together, I think it looks great. Um, we're gonna do another hypericum in there. And I think my final element, I have this gorgeous clematis, so I'm gonna put some of that in because it's kind of whimsical and, and it's got some fun movement. And again, this is something you can, that when it has these laterals like this, I'm gonna use this piece alone. So I'm gonna cut right here and get this guy in. Where should we? Here's some room over here. So adds a fun, and again, that's a different shape than everybody. So just fun for that added interest. I'll put a few pieces of this clematis in there, and I think we're probably going to be all done. Got one more here. Like I said, super messy, but it's worth it. It's what you know your trash bags and compost are for, right? Um, I'm going to keep her together like these two pieces and just see where we're missing. Maybe like right, right in here. Okay, so there we go. There's your finished product. You can do this same sort of method more oblong for a longer table if you'd like, if you've got sort of an oblong container. You can even achieve that look with a, a cube or um, a cylinder like this by just keeping those stems on the side a little bit longer. So you can create that same kind of look for if you've got a table with, you know, a long table with many people instead of a round table. So I hope that some of these tips and tricks for mechanics and, you know, building a flower arrangement helps you feel like you're able to do that yourself. So experiment. I'd love to see pictures if you do your own. You know, my email is always at the bottom of all of ours are at the bottom of these videos. So if you have any questions or confused about something you saw today and you want to ask, email me. Another thing I wanted to mention too is that all of our videos are on, <coughs> excuse me, are up on our YouTube channel. So if you go to our YouTube channel and you subscribe, you'll be able to see the videos whenever they're posted. Um, and there's a log of all the videos we've done in the past, so it's a great reference there. So thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you again next week.